Hello and welcome to this video about farm to early care and education and is it a good market for your farm? My name is Vanessa Harold. I am with the University of Wisconsin-Madison Center for Integrated Agricultural Systems and I am very happy to be sharing this topic with you today. For our training agenda, we plan to chat for between 20 to 25 minutes. We have a great Q&A and we're going to get this information to you and then get you back to the fields as quickly as possible. We will chat about this project and the partners who have gathered here today. What is Wisconsin Farm to Early Care and Education? And what is early care and education in general? How Farm to Early Care might provide opportunities for your farm? We will have a great question and answer with Becky Breda, who is here with us today. And we'll talk through some key considerations when you might be selling or working with an early care site and how to prepare your farm business for farm to early care sales. And then we'll also share a little bit about the new Celebrating Seasonality Recipe Guide that is coming out very soon. This presentation is brought to you by a number of partners, including the Center for Integrated Agricultural Systems and Rooted in Madison, Wisconsin. We have been partnering on the Celebrating Seasonality Farm to ECE Recipe Guide thanks to a specialty crop block grant in Wisconsin. The purpose of the guide is to increase the use of Wisconsin grown fruits and vegetables at Wisconsin early care sites. And that is why we are getting together today to talk to you as farmers about opportunities to sell to these early care and education sites. And we are very grateful to Becky who is a current farmer at Two Good Farm CSA and an early care and early childhood specialist to talk with us about her experience in early childhood and also as a farmer selling products to early childhood centers. What is Wisconsin Farm to Early Care and Education? And you will see the acronym ECE throughout this presentation and it means early, uh, early child care and education. So the goal is to increase access to local foods, gardening, hands-on learning, and family engagement opportunities in all ECE sites. And that can happen through selling food to early care sites. It can happen through gardening. It can happen through all the hands-on learning and engagement that goes on within an educational facility throughout the day. And with families and caretakers who are engaged with their kiddos, during the day and also at home through educational activities um, with kids in exchange with an early care center. So in Wisconsin, there is a great network of folks across the state who are partnering and working together to help increase access to farm to early care activities across the state by engaging farmers like you, early care providers, and other state agency and nonprofit professionals who are creating resources and tools and activities to help early care centers incorporate more of these activities. And what is early care and education? And that is basically any early childhood education site that serves kiddos from birth to five years. And it could be any kind of opportunity for that. So group child care centers, in-home family child care, preschools, daycares, Head Start, Early Head Start, and also 4K programs in K-12 school districts. So basically any setting where a child is receiving education and care at uh, ages zero to five. And there is also food served in these environments, which is really the most important connection for you to know about as a farmer and what your connection can be to an early care site. Most sites do serve meals, including breakfast, lunch, and sometimes supper, but also snacks throughout the day. And many are looking for nutritious, healthy, fresh options from local farms. Also early care sites do do educational activities where there might be an opportunity for you as a farmer to provide a farm field trip or come into the classroom or also to provide food for educational activities throughout the day. Early care sites are very unique, which allows each center to adopt practices that suit their needs. And there are a lot of early care centers throughout the state, which means there is probably a facility near you serving kids and serving meals to kids that might be a great place for you to sell your food uh, your fruits and vegetables, or also possibly partner uh, for a farm stand or an, uh, a CSA share. And we'll talk more about those opportunities. Why might selling to an early care site be a good fit for your farm? When we think about maybe farm to school or selling to institutions, 
that can often be large volumes that maybe isn't the right fit for all kinds of farms. But if you are a farm that is interested in selling possibly smaller volumes to places nearby, Farm to ECE might be a great fit for you. This screen shows a lot of the different reasons why Farm to ECE or selling to a local early care site might be a great fit for you. So one, family engagement provides an opportunity to connect with families outside of the early care environment. Early care sites have some flexible food purchasing because they're small and often have autonomy in how they purchase food. A small site size might allow you to do sales that are more similar to your CSA or what you sell at a farmer's market without having to really commit to large wholesale purchases. So it could be a great fit for CSA farmers. A lot of early care sites have on-site kitchens or on-site prep capacity, which really allows uh, for some flexibility in what products can be accepted and processed. Also, early care centers, unlike schools, do operate year-round, which coincides great with your farm schedule. So there are opportunities to pair products with sites throughout the year. And also, as we talk to you as CSA farmers, it is possible for an early care site or center to be a pickup site or a partner site for your CSA because there's that built in daily drop off and pickup or also to do a pop up farm stand. And cosmetically imperfect seconds are great for early care sites because almost everything is getting processed before it goes into the hands of little kids. So that's the basics of early care sites and why they might be a great fit for you to sell your Wisconsin fruits and vegetables. And now we're gonna have a question and answer with Becky Breda, who has experienced this from both sides as both an early childhood specialist and a farmer. So Rebecca, uh, Rebecca we're gonna just ask you a couple of questions here and we can't wait to hear what you have to share about how this market opportunity can be great for farmers. Do you wanna start by just giving us a brief introduction to you and your background and your experiences with Farm to ECE? Sure, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate the opportunity to share um, some of our experiences. Um, I have about a 30 year background in the field of early childhood education, um, including working directly in a classroom with kids, being an administrator of different uh, child care programs and um, also helping in the kitchens. And um, also then I have been involved on the farm side uh, because about well, eight years ago, I married a farmer. And before that, I didn't know anything at all about farming. Uh, but if you're going to marry a farmer, you're going to learn about farming because he's going to talk about it or she, whoever <laughs> is going to talk about things like the weather and the equipment and the seeds and what's happening out in the field. So um, I got some firsthand experience with that. Um, I've helped out in the field a little bit. I've helped at farmers markets. I've definitely helped with the administration of the farm. And because I care about what happens in early childhood and I care about what happens with our farm, um, I saw lots of opportunities to connect the two. And um, because my husband cares about what I care about, um, we took opportunities when they presented themselves to get our produce into early childhood programs. So um, we have seen that happen in a variety of ways in um, our local area. And so I'm happy to share some of those experiences with you. Well, thank you so much. We're gonna start with some questions that kind of share what it's like to be an early care provider so that farmers kind of know what they might be getting into if they approach an early care site about selling produce to them um, in any way, either directly through a CSA share as being a CSA pickup site. So tell us just a little bit, what does the meal and food landscape looks, look like inside an early care center? Well, first of all, it's important to know that um, in the state of Wisconsin, the licensing requirements require that every licensed child care provider um, serve food at least every three hours to kids. So pretty much every child care provider that is providing care to children for longer than three hours is going to be serving food. Um, now, whether they provide the food or not is a different um, different thing, but most of them are providing the meals. So what if you went into a child care program, you would find that most of them are, are 
serving breakfast, lunch, and snack. Um, whether it's a morning snack or afternoon snack, you're, you're going to see some combination of those meals over the course of the day. Um, depending on the hours that they're open, some may also serve a, a supper if they're open longer hours, and some may serve an additional snack. Um, the other thing that the licensing requirements uh, require is that meals meet the USDA um, meal service uh, pattern, which is the, you might be familiar with the my plate requirements. So they have to meet all of those components for what's in a meal. So licensing dictates that, that there are a certain number of meals served and that there are a certain number of components in every meal. So it's a very um, appropriate place, uh, child care programs are for farmers to consider selling their produce because uh, there have to be meals served in child care programs. Great, thank you. And we are always glad that those um, nutrition guidelines include lots of fruits and vegetables, which is a great, a great way for farmers to know that these sites are serving fruits and vegetables to kiddos. Um, tell us a little bit about how early care sites maybe prepare meals and snacks, but serve meals and snacks. I know that it looks different than maybe a K-12 cafeteria setting. And also we recognize that early care sites are all really, really different from each other. But give us a little bit of what it looks like maybe in a school kitchen, or early care kitchen, or uh, actually serving these meals and snacks to little eaters. Good question. Um, so again, licensing has something to say about this. Um, meals are required to be served family style. So the kids are supposed to be seated at a table and staff are required to sit down and eat with the kids. So that's what happens in the classroom. Um, in terms of the ages, um, infants uh, might be served at, at different times because infants, children under one year of age, um, you know, some of them are not eating solid foods or definitely those kids are on their own individualized eating schedules. But once kids reach about a year of age and they might be on a more structured feeding schedule, you would probably see kids sitting down at the same time in a classroom um, and eating together with a teacher. Um, so you're likely to see that meal prep is happening at a given time, and then foods are taken to the classroom. Um, most, I would say it's pretty typical that there is a kitchen um, and, and meal prep is happening in that kitchen. Um, it's also pretty typical that you do not have a chef, but you have somebody who is a cook or and might be a teacher who is maybe working part-time in the classroom, but then also part-time in the kitchen. Um, so, so meals are generally easy to prepare. Uh, we're talking about simple sandwiches and simple fruits and vegetables, things that can be cut up and either cooked or served raw. Um, also things that are very kid friendly, um, commonly served, right? Things that are served at home. Um, so kids are familiar with them. Um, in my experience working in centers, um, I've seen a lot of things uh, that are purchased either canned or frozen because they're already prepped and then they either just need to be heated or can be dumped out and served um, right in the classroom. Um, it's, it's much more challenging obviously for a cook who might be also working in a classroom or could possibly be the center director who is then pinch hitting in the kitchen. Um, it's, it's, more challenging if that person has to go into the kitchen and do a lot of prep work with something that is in its raw form. So, uh, you know, we don't see as much of that, although that's moving, that the needle's moving on that, and I'm glad to see that. Thank you so much. I think it's always helpful for folks to know, you know, how that food is going to get integrated into a meal system. And can you tell us off the top of your head, are there any go to fruits and vegetables that are maybe always a hit with kids or the easiest for early care sites to prepare in the kitchen? Well, I can tell you that uh, we saw a lot of apples and pears and bananas, and you see a lot of things like cooked carrots and peas. Um, uh, we have to always be concerned with choking hazards. And so some of the things that are very common, like carrots, um, it's easier if they're purchased already cut up 
cooked and then canned, right? Because then we don't have to worry about if they're going to be too hard for a child to, <clears throat> excuse me, eat. Um, that doesn't mean that that a farmer should think of that as a barrier because there are plenty of people in early childhood who are willing to purchase something and do the work to get it out there into the classroom. Um, but, but I will say that I've seen a lot of things much more commonly used, applesauce instead of uh, raw fresh apples. But, uh, but certainly we see with older kids, plenty of apples that are served fresh and raw, uh, just sliced up. And when I was in the center, you know, we bought fresh apples and just cut them up small. <laughs> just make sure that you're preparing them in a way that small eaters can eat them and they're not a choking hazard. Thanks, Becky. That sounds like cucumbers and tomatoes might be a real good fit there too. And also um, a reminder that it doesn't have to be perfect looking produce if it's going to kids, especially if it's going to get cut up. Well, it's going to get handled as well by these little hands and it's going to get mushed up no matter what. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you for that realistic perspective. And then um, last kind of like from the provider side of things, what does an early care day-to-day -day look like and what might a farmer know if they're going to approach an early care center about selling them fruits and vegetables? I think that the biggest thing that a farmer would need to consider, and, and this is a consideration from both sides, is budget. Um, early care providers have very limited budgets and from my experience on the farm side, so do we. So it's, it's a sensitive topic um, from both sides. But I think that if both sides of that are willing to talk about it, it can definitely be something that can be managed, right? Um, I mean, my experience uh, was that, well, my experience was that we donated. Our farm donated a lot uh, to the center where I worked. Um, I would not recommend that, uh, that that be the way to go just because I don't think that that's necessarily a fair thing. It's not a fair expectation anyway for a child care provider to expect that they would get things donated. Um, the farmer needs to get compensated for all of their work. Um, my husband chose to donate because this was a passion of mine. Um, but I, I also know that there is a lot at the farm that is not of the quality that would make it into our CSA boxes or to our market stands or to our wholesale customers. And that stuff was fine to go to the child care program anyway, because we're going to cut it up, cook it up and put it on a plate where somebody's going to mash it with their hands anyway, before they take it with their hands and put it in their mouths. And so what it actually looked like didn't really matter as much. Um, but, but definitely, I think that was the biggest issue was budget, um, just that it's, it's a sensitive topic and there's not a lot of money to spend on the early childhood side and um, money needs to change hands because the farmer needs to be compensated. Yes, and this is definitely, um, we want this to be a viable market for farmers. So why don't you put your farm hat on and knowing that you know you do need to be able to make money for your products and that early care centers have tight budgets. Tell us a little bit about why selling to early care sites might be a valuable market opportunity or why it's important, maybe if it's not your most profitable market that you're selling to. Well, for me personally and my husband, um, we have kids and we believe that children should be eating good food for two big reasons. First of all, because healthy food and we're an organic farm, so there's that component of it as well, um, that, that healthy food is important for brain development and body development. And so we want to see that going into young bodies. Um, so there's that piece. The other thing is that children need to be introduced to healthy whole food at an early age because we want to promote good eating habits from an early age. We want to promote um, habits that they will carry with them hopefully for their whole lives. So those are things that those are ideas and principles that are important um, from from our values perspective that uh, we thought was 
was an important thing to share with early care providers that, you know, if we are growing this and we know that you as an early childhood professional care about these things, then we align in this way and we'd like to share that with you. Thank you. And you're also developing your future customer base. <laughs> that's true, but that's a long way off. <laughs> we probably won't still be selling when they're actually buying. <laughs> but you do have access to their parents and families and caregivers. Yes. And did you find any helpful connections there that people recognized you at the market because you were selling or uh, donating products at the early care site? Yes, we definitely had families at the center come to our market stand. And even if they didn't purchase from us, it was nice to see them. And it was nice to see the kids outside of the center and make a connection that wasn't just work um, or, or ECE work. Uh, <clears throat> and and we did, we definitely had some of them who joined our CSA, so that was nice, but that wasn't our primary thing. For me, the primary thing was getting them to eat good food. That was important for me. Um, that, and my husband just indulges me that way. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. And then one more question we have you prepared for, and then we're going to ask you another question. Um, from your experience with early care sites and farming, tell us what type of farm you think might be the best fit to approach an early care site or sell products to an early care site. Well, I think any farm can do this. It's not really the type of farm, but I think a characteristic that's important is that you're flexible because it's not going to be really easy. Um, I mean, the, the needs of the early care program are going to change from week to week, maybe depending on their menu. Um, and, and they might find that some things work one time and don't work. I mean, they're, they're, it's just, you're going to need to be flexible, but you need to be flexible with your customers at market too. And so that's important. Um, I mean, we're small enough that I think that we're kind of nimble and that was okay with us. Um, so, so flexibility is key. Great. And then a question we didn't prepare you for, if farmers are interested in finding early care centers to sell products to or partner with for a CSA share, how would they go about finding the early care centers that are near to them? That's a good question. Um, in Wisconsin, I, I know that I know how you could do it in Wisconsin, so I can't speak for other states. But in Wisconsin, you can go on the Department of Children and Families website, and there's actually a, a locator tool there for finding child care providers. Much like on FairShare's website, there's a, there's a tool for locating farms in your area. You could do a search for child care programs in your area. And um, so, and there's a map. And you could find those child care providers in your area and then you could reach out to them because when you click on them, they have their contact information. So that would be a simple way to actually just search for programs that are close to you geographically. Um, I would guess that in uh, states other than Wisconsin, there would probably be a tool similar, but I can't say that for certain. That is great. Thank you. I knew we could put you on the spot for that one. Um, well, thank you. Are there any last like thoughts or kind of nuggets of wisdom you would want to share with farmers who are thinking about selling to early care sites? I would say that, you know, we have a CSA and we did actually drop off CSA shares at the site where I was a center director. And I know of other centers that do that. And I think that that's a great opportunity. It's one way um, for other families to actually see your produce. And even if they don't want to purchase a CSA, they actually get to see your beautiful produce and they are, um, they have a, a very up close um, vision of what you're selling. And then they might be more inspired to go check you out at farmer's market. Um, so, so that's a really neat opportunity if you do have a CSA to, to consider partnering with a child care program to do to be a CSA drop off site. I think that that's an awesome opportunity. And I do know of other places that do that. So that's a consideration. That is great. Well, Becky, 
Thank you so much for your time with us today. We hope you stay on the, the line. And if you maybe have anything to add at the end, we would welcome it. We're going to hop on through with our last bit of presentation here that covers some of the basics for what you need to know as a farmer if you are considering working with early care sites. So Becky covered so much of this, um, but here's some really good places to start. Think about products that are currently used by an early care site that you can substitute with local products. So you can talk with a, a center director or get their menus, um, but think about what they might be serving that you know you grow that are really easy to switch out, but also easy to prep and serve for kids. Um, think if you have any culturally relevant foods that might be a good fit and reflect the populations served by sites near you. Ask the site if they are interested in purchasing cosmetically imperfect seconds, especially if maybe they have the ability to um, prepay and then kind of get a weekly delivery of whatever you have available, knowing that they might be able to integrate it into their menu. Um, learn if you approach a center what their equipment and facilities do look like. So you might be able to figure out maybe a delivery schedule or what types of products will fit best with their infrastructure when it comes to washing, processing, preparing, or how much cooking that they do. Maybe they're just looking for snack options so you are able to identify the fruits and vegetables that might make the best snacks and you can do a delivery schedule that works for that. Obviously, you're going to want to talk about delivery needs and uh, frequency, timing, packing, regular things that you're thinking about if you are working with other institutions or wholesale customers. Um, and if it feels like it's a right fit, talk about ways that you can provide education to children or families, maybe through farm visits or field trips or having uh, visits of you as a farmer into the classroom. And then also talk about opportunities to market your farm either um, on the menu, in the school, or through newsletters or other resources that are sent home to families and caregivers. Um, we don't expect that farmers want to donate their time always to go visit a classroom, but we do also recognize that there can be a valuable marketing opportunity for you as a farmer and that that time can be worthwhile. Um, we would also love to hear from you if you have experiences working from early care sites, what some key considerations might be. Also, lastly, thinking about how to prepare your business to be ready to engage with an early care center. If you are selling wholesale or working with other institutions, you probably have this all down, but it is good to review. So make sure that you meet all licensing requirements. Um, if you're just selling unprocessed fruits and vegetables, not too much there. Make sure you have your food safety and um, other insurance documents ready to share for folks if and when they ask for it. Think about and think closely about, you know, how much you do want to engage with children and families when it comes to marketing, education or engagement there and um, how that looks in terms of like your time and your responsibilities on the farm. Think about how you can really clearly communicate your pricing and product availability throughout the year since early care sites are year round. And there are some good systems for doing regular sales or regular communications that it makes it easy for early care sites to know what you have and place an order on a regular schedule. Think about early care sites as a CSA pickup or mini market site. Maybe you can do a pop-up market during pickup times and that's a really good fit when you have surplus product throughout the year. And then thinking about those products that you grow that really are best suited for the early care environment or are featured in the Celebrating Seasonality Recipe Guide, which is coming out soon, which is featuring Wisconsin grown products. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So this is a new resource. It has 12 recipes for early care sites that are appropriate for the early childhood setting, meet the nutrition requirements, and feature Wisconsin grown fruits and vegetables for all 12 months of the year. We are promoting this to early care sites with the hopes that they better know and understand what's grown in the state, but also have these recipes to help them prepare simple meals and snacks that they can serve. And we hope when they get this recipe guide, they will start reaching out to farmers like you to search for products that they can buy and serve at their sites. So if for any reason you want a copy of this guide to share with an early care site that you're reaching out to, you can go to rootedwisconsin.org backslash recipe and order copies of the guide or access it online. And uh, we're really trying to feature these Wisconsin products and easy ways to prepare them. But also we're really excited that this recipe guide features four Wisconsin farms 
that are of the right size and scale that would sell to an early care site. So there are uh, farmer profiles in here. We hope it helps make early care centers feel like farmers are people that they know and are accessible. And we're very excited that um, Becky and Tim at Badger Organics are featured in here. I think this is your first time seeing how this profile turned out. Uh, but we really wanted to show early care sites that farms and farmers are real people in the community and that they should feel comfortable approaching them either at a farmer's market um, by subscribing to a CSA or reaching out to have a good relationship. So this resource will be coming out very soon in um, summer of 2021 and we welcome you to use it as a resource to help connect with early care centers in your area. And there are a lot of great resources to help you learn more about this. So the Rooted website has a whole Farm to Early Care page full of great resources and a fact sheet specific for farmers who are interested in engaging and selling to early care sites. And also you can reach out to that email address to um, get specific assistance on connecting with an early care site. That's all that we have planned for you today. We hope that you enjoyed this learning opportunity. And if you have any questions about connecting with early care sites, we are here to help. Becky, I want to open it up to you in case you have any last thoughts for farmers about engaging with early care, why it might be useful, or any parting words as a farmer and early care specialist that you would want to share with folks. Not much, except I would encourage you to do it because it's very rewarding. That is great. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today. There is a link to an evaluation survey in the notes below the YouTube video, and we hope that you will fill that out because this is a grant funded project. And so we'd like to know how we can improve our resources and tools to help serve you better. Thank you for your time today. We do hope that you sell your Wisconsin fruits and vegetables to little eaters across the state.